it's got a touch slider, it's got customizable LEDs. The lights flash when you press it, it sounds awesome. The thing is, it's just too. Welcome to another Nihongo Gamer video. So excited! This is an arcade controller that is designed to look just like the controller that you use at the actual arcades when playing the original Project Diva games. Now, there was a controller that came out a bit like this, but obviously much smaller. It was the Hori Mini controller, and it had a control layout a lot like a PlayStation. But what we really wanted was the actual... The act arcade game. Now I don't know if it's limited edition but you can see here it also says 546 out of a thousand. I don't know maybe they'll make a thousand more after this or maybe they're only making a thousand and then they're gonna stop. Now the most appropriate way to do a Hatsune Miku unboxing is of course to use the Hatsune Miku Victorinox Swiss Army Knife. Here's a quick close-up if you're interested to know more about this there is a separate video linked below. So let's go ahead and get it out of the box. Now the main difference between this and the previous arcade controller that did come out for Project Diva is that this controller only has four large buttons. This is the product box. There's a box inside a box here. I think the only way to get it out of the box is to turn this box upside down. Let's see if we can... Okay, so inside this first box is another box. Now I'm very paranoid about damaging Miku, so I'm actually going to move her away for this, and this part of the unboxing. And my coffee as well. You can see it's a Nintendo licensed product for the Nintendo Switch. It is NSW230. On this side it says Hatsune Miku Project Diva Mega 39. And actually 3 and 9 are Miku. And because of the apostrophe S it's Miku Zu. And so they're calling it Mega Mix. Alright, you can already start to see inside the box. There it is. Let's go ahead and take it out. Yeah! Oh, there's it. This is it. Okay, let's just chuck that on the floor. Oh, there it is! I should totally bring this to the next Street Fighter meetup. Oh! Yes! Yes! Now that's a button. Check it out. This is the Project Diva Mega Mix for Nintendo Switch. Arcade style controller with the four buttons. X, Y, B, A. First thing I want to do is see if I can double tap them. You can double tap them. They're loud! They're really, really loud. What does it sound like if I put it on the table? Not as bad when it's on the table, I suppose. Alright, let's go through the buttons on the controller. You've got X, Y, B, A, and you've also got a touch slider. Now, originally on this game for the PS4, you would just use the shoulder buttons on your control pad, or you could assign it to an actual button. You could actually have a physical button for pressing L and R. But this time, you'll hopefully be able to actually slide across the screen just like in the arcade game. Slide, button, slide, button. Instead of just holding down R, just hold down R didn't feel the same as actually sliding across the touch slider. Across the top you've got analog sticks, you may be using that to navigate through menus or also to move around the camera when you're choosing different costumes for your characters. You've got a D-pad. Who needs an arcade stick? Now this button is really curious. It says LED. If this is a special button just for changing the lighting, I'm super excited. You got ZL, ZR, L, R, minus, plus, screenshot button, and the home button. So all the buttons that you should need on a Nintendo Switch. And then on the back of the controller, unfortunately, it does not have padding all over the bottom. In fact, the only thing that you get in terms of slip control are these four rubber feet right here. And last but not least, it looks like the the cable for this controller is also hardwired into it, so you can't remove this like a USB-C connection or anything. And also, unfortunately, it doesn't look like there's a place to actually store the cable, so they're not expecting you to actually take this anywhere, they're expecting you to set it down, plug it into the console and just leave it there. They're not expecting you to like take this to your local fighting game event. And I said last but not least, but actually this is last but not least. It looks like there's a headphone jack here on the front. All right, I am very curious to see what these lights are all about. So I'm gonna take the cable here. All right, plugging it in now. Okay, the switch is plugged in. <gasps> Check this out. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest, I didn't even know that it could do this. All right, it's plugged in and I'm assuming that if I press the buttons, they'll like flash. Yeah. That's so cool! So when you're playing the game, you can have lots and lots of flashing lights as fast as you're pressing the buttons. You can double tap. 
Obviously, if you double tap, it's so fast you can barely see the light flashing. It's very, very loud. <laughs> oh, no way! Oh my goodness! I did not know it was gonna do that! <laughs> I'm over the moon. Give me pressing your buttons like X, Y, B, B, A, slide, right, slide, left. <laughs> oh wow! You can slide two different directions at the same time. Whoa, wait a minute! It activates anywhere. It doesn't, it doesn't care. It doesn't care about multi-point touch. It just, as long as your finger is there, it switches on the light. Slide to the right, slide to the left. Hit the button. I've got the controller right here. And one thing that I did not realize until after finishing the first portion of the video is that actually, in addition to the fact that these buttons can change lights off and lights on. One thing I didn't realize until I was trying this right here is that you can change the color of this by pressing the LED button. So by pressing the LED button, I can make this flash on and off, but I can also change the color by going up and down with the D-pad right here. You can see the D-pad there. So I can change between pink, uh, yellowy white, whitey blue, dark blue, red, and then back to a sort of peachy white, pink, light, then the teal green for Miku, yellow, orange, pink. Anyway, I'm gonna stick with Hatsune Miku teal. So it's time to try Hatsune Miku Project Diva Mega Mix. Yes! What? Okay, okay, we'll actually play Project Diva now. All right, launching Hatsune Miku Project Diva Mega Mix for the very first time, and it's telling me how to secure my Joy-Cons. So it's got an auto save feature, press okay. All right, so these are the different games that we've got available. I'm just gonna go through them one by one. The options on the main screen are Rhythm Game, Customize, this is Player Playlists, you've got the Gallery, you've got the Nintendo eShop, Options, and then we go back to Rhythm Game. Let's go straight into Rhythm Game. Now we gotta do Arcade Mode or Mix Mode. I'm just gonna do Arcade Mode. Aha! I did not read the instructions. It says you have to go to the Mode switch and tell it to actually use the controller. So you actually have to go to customize, not options. All right, here we go. Game control, arcade mode, senor controller. You got to change this to on. And I'm also going to change this to just be standard, standard controls. Okay, this is so much better. Yes! All right, time to give you a verdict on the Hori. I mean, I've literally just opened it today. I, I really want to love this. This is probably perfect for 99% of people who buy it. I think it feels absolutely amazing. It feels exactly, as far as I can remember from the arcades, it feels just like the buttons from there. It's just as difficult to do because when you're doing like fast buttons like this, it's actually pretty difficult. I'll say you have to make, what, what kind of bothers me, you have to make sure you push all the way down to make it actually register. You can't just kind of tap it lightly on the button. You've got to make sure that you actually actuate the button. And that's absolutely fine if you're in a loud environment, like a video game center, like an arcade where you're playing this game. The problem is I'm playing this in my house and a house in Japan and Japan is particularly cautious about sound. Everyone lives in close proximity. Even if you live like in your own house, sometimes the houses are like quite close together or the windows are always open. Just be, people are very, what's the word? Conscientious about sound and how loud people are building, be it building, how, how loud people are being in Japan. And it's such a shame because this is literally like having the arcade 
in your house. If you set up a monitor in front of you and you put this down here, not only is it exactly the same size, as far as I can tell, it's exact, it feels like it's exactly the same size as the controller as you use in the arcade. It's also got this touch panel. It's also like customizable. So I could actually change this to pink or something if I wanted. Like it's literally a dream come true. The thing is, it's just really loud and I, I do want to, because I do play with buttons and stuff, I do really want to try opening it up and taking these screws off and then just seeing if I can make these buttons quiet because if they were quieter, I could use this at home. The thing, and I would play it every day, honestly, I absolutely would. It's so much fun and it feels so good. The, the problem is only the sound for me. Uh, and maybe in other countries where you all live in detached houses away from your neighbors, maybe that's not a problem, but definitely if you live in an apartment in Japan, this will be too loud. The thing is, they didn't make this to be a product that's going to sell well. They're doing this as a limited pro I assume they're doing this as a limited run thing. It's like a, it's going to be like a collector's item, which is the other reason why I don't want to open it up. Because first of all, you're going to void the warranty. That's what it says now. I don't know if legally if that's actually true. I have heard that you can go ahead and open it anyway. But I really, it's, such a, it's just such a shame. I really want to be able to open it and see if I can make these buttons quieter. But part of the... Part of the allure of this is the sound, you know, it's tappy and loud and it sounds like an arcade machine and that's really, really cool. You know, it lights up, you press the buttons, they actuate, you can actually see the flashing lights, you can change these colours. I've got to say that I'm glad that it's everything I hoped it was. It's just that it's also as loud as I thought it was going to be. If you live in a house that's detached away from other people and it's not going to be, the noise is not going to be an issue. I, I think this thing is perfect. It works exactly as advertised. The sliding of the touch panel, that works exactly as advertised. It does slip off my lap, so honestly, I really ought to put some, you know, it would be nice because Hori does have arcade sticks where they put non-slip mats all over the bottom. So it seems a shame to have literally nothing on the bottom at all. I mean, obviously you're not supposed to put this thing on your lap, but here we are. So there you go, those are my first impressions for the Hori dedicated controller for Project Diva Hatsune Miku Mega Mix. What a mouthful. It's $350, but anyone who's probably tried to make one of these has probably spent at least one or $200 trying to build their own one, and it's not been perfect anyway. You get this one, it's fully made, it already works directly with the console, there's a PS4 version, there's a Nintendo Switch version, it's got a touch slider, it's got customizable LEDs, the lights flash when you press it, it sounds awesome, the thing is it's just too loud for me. Literally, if it didn't have that one aspect, it would be perfect for me. But because most people probably don't have an issue with controllers being loud, it's probably already perfect for you. I think I love it so much, I'm not going to sell it. I'm gonna just try and fix it and make it the quiet controller that I need it to be. Hey, maybe we can get Gamer Finger to try and build some custom buttons for this. <laughs> that would be good, wouldn't it? That's all for now. Don't forget to comment, subscribe, share the links and all that great stuff, and join us on Discord. There should be a link down below where you can come and chat, hang out. It's basically a giant chat room for talking about gear, Japan, music games, art, whatever it is, fighting games that you want to talk about. This has been probably one of the coolest things I have ever purchased and tried. I really want to make it work out. And hopefully in a future video, you'll see what happens to this controller. I might fix it, but then again, I might sell it. See you next time.